This is good green coffee. And this is bad green coffee. Let's talk about this and why direct trade might not always be the best thing. I'm Eric, this is The Mug Life. I didn't choose The Mug Life, The Mug Life chose me. So there are some people that believe that direct trade needs to be a roaster or yeah, a roaster paying for coffee directly to a farmer. In other words, I write a check, give it to the farmer and the farmer gives me coffee. The idea, and it's a noble idea, <laughs> is that we cut out the middleman, the importer. The person who's in charge of getting coffee into the country and they necessarily have to make money off that because they need to make a living as well. Uh, but if we cut out the middleman and don't use an importer and deal directly with a coffee producer, instead, the idea is we can pay that coffee producer more money for their crop. But is that always a good thing? Is that always something that we want to do. Here's a perfect example. We have two coffees that we recently received from Honduras in the shop right now. We get pre-shipped samples. So before the coffee ever leaves Honduras, we're given samples of it. Uh, we were given samples of this coffee here and this coffee here, two separate lots. Uh, and they were both really good. They cupped very well. We bought the entire lot of this one, uh, which was not a very big lot. I think it was only 18 bags of coffee. And we were able to get half of this lot. The other, Another roaster bought the other half of the lot. Um, but when the coffee arrived in the United States, you can see from this, there's all these dark ones, uh, stuff that's not there's dead beans in there. There's all sorts of problems with this coffee. Basically what happened is the farmer brought the coffee to a production mill. The mill goes through and processes the coffee, gets the cherry off. You can read about that in our All About Coffee class, how that happens. Uh, there's a sorting process that happens after the coffee has been processed where they take out all of the bad beans and the bottom line is that sorting process got missed somehow. Who knows, doesn't really matter. But when the coffee arrived in the US, uh, we opened the bag and this is what we see. From a green coffee grading perspective and from a cupping perspective, this coffee is going to taste definitely subpar, not what we would normally sell and definitely not even specialty grade coffee. So we have a problem here. Uh, let's con consider two buying scenarios. Number one, if I had purchased this coffee directly from a farmer. I had contracted with a farmer, the farmer had sent me the coffee and when the coffee got here, this is what was there. Uh, my idea is to build a relationship with that producer, that farmer, and uh, continually buy good coffee from him, but the mistake was made, okay? It's not a bad thing, it's not malicious, but something went wrong. What do I do? Do I just tell the producer that I'm not gonna buy his coffee and not pay him? Or if I've already paid him, do I demand my money back? Do I just go with the flow and say, oh, well, such is life can I afford several thousand dollars of bad coffee in my shop? That's a great question. The other option is that I buy through an importer and the importer is responsible for sourcing coffee. Uh, there are contracts typically that the coffee that I cupped pre-ship and the coffee that arrives here in the United States have to be of the same quality. Otherwise, I have the opportunity legally to not purchase, not pay for that coffee, not purchase that coffee. Uh, so there are two different situations there. And unfortunately, 
with the concept that some people, not all people, uh, view as direct trade, where we cut out that middleman, the importer, what ends up happening is you uh, <laughs> sour your relationship with the producer. Because what's going to happen to a small roaster when this coffee shows up in their shop? Most of them don't have an outlet to sell that. Most of them don't have a way of paying for it. Um, so what are you going to do to your farmer? You're just going to take his crop of coffee for the year and say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay you for that. The other option when we're dealing with an importer, a middleman, uh, the importer probably has insurance to cover the cost of this. So the insurance company is going to pay for this, not necessarily the producer. Uh, or better yet, uh, an importer has a large number of customers. They have different roasters. Some of them are specialty coffee roasters. Some of them are not specialty coffee roasters and are roasting commodity grade coffee. Maybe they could turn around and sell this coffee to them. Either way, the importer has a way of mitigating the cost of this particular problem without throwing it back on the producer who probably doesn't have the means to pay for it and really does not want to lose his entire season's income on that crop because somebody at the mill messed up. So there's a lot to think about in here in this particular scenario and with the idea of direct trade. We've talked about direct trade before and how it's kind of a nebulous concept. It hasn't been very well defined, but I would hold that the idea of roasters buying directly from producers without significant means of continuing to support those producers when things go bad uh, is a bad idea. If you're buying from a producer just because this year they had great coffee and you really like that coffee and you think buying from them directly is a good idea, that's okay. But consider what's going to happen next year. Producers are running a business just like you are and they want long-term customers. Year over year, they want customers who come back just like you have customers who come back all the time. And they would love to sell you the, the same person coffee next year that they sold last year. That's the best way to continue to work with producers. Do you have the financial wherewithal to continue to support that producer when something like this happens? When coffee shows up at your shop that is not specialty grade, that is commodity grade coffee. Do you have an outlet to sell that? Can you continue to help that farmer, even though it wasn't his fault, somebody at the mill messed up uh, and still buy that coffee from him anyway? That's an interesting question and an interesting challenge in the direct trade uh, world. So if you're a coffee consumer, if you're buying coffee, be aware from this discussion what direct trade means. Direct trade does not necessarily mean that a roaster goes over and brings over back home coffee in the overhead bin where we pay a, a farmer directly. That is not always the best solution. Direct trade might mean that we're still working with a middleman. There's still an importer that brings immense value to this equation that enables us to continue to get good coffee. And when things go wrong, that importer can alleviate the costs and the, the, the issues that might come up with not paying producers or uh, a small roaster having to pay for coffee that they can't sell. So, so as you consider direct trade, if you're a roaster or a consumer, just be aware of what that means. And as always, keep serving coffee people love.